It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Barry. This is the world of Valhalla. It's a place ruled by evil, nasty, twisted, sophisticated, nice teethed gods who pluck people, creatures, and monsters from other worlds and other times and then places them to play combat with each other, whether they are on the toilet or not. It is you, the player, who will take the responsibility of being the evil, nasty god and choosing an army of dragons and frost giants and samurai ninjas and grey metally things they have their combat for them. And they will have combat with these dicey things. And it will be the player with the most ferocious, nastiest army of monsters with biggest teeth and nah, 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 nah. who will win this game? Will it be you? Let's find out when we play. should dot 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 I'm Barry and this is a very special video for me and probably a very special video for some of you watching I need to do a bit of an introduction to this because I'm slouching and I need a cup of tea like that and this video is special and I will go into why it's special a bit later but let's do a bit of an introduction let's talk about my past now I've always been a gamer when I was young I played with family and friends we played the usual like you probably Monopoly, Cluedo, Scrabble, uh, Masterpiece, Mastermind, Connect Four <laughs> Battleship blah 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 etc etc um, but there was one turning point, well there's actually two turning points in my life. One of those turning points is when a games workshop opened up in my town. And I would go in and I would look at all these beautiful painted miniatures and drool over these landscapes and thought, is this a game? One day, this appeared on the shelves. And guess what? I bought it. Well, obviously, because I've got it here. But I bought it, and this was a turning point. This was gaming. My friends adored it. I adored it. It was fantastic. And there were expansions which made the game more and more replayable. So that's turning point number one. Turning point number two came many, many years later when I moved out of my parents' home. And when I say many, many, many years later, I mean late. Anyway, uh, it, that's when, I, that's when I had a cup of tea. That is when I found it at the bottom of my cupboard and it brought back many, many emotions. I thought, I want to do this again. I want to play this game again. And at the time, the internet was around. And I thought, would it be great if I could look on the internet and see if there was any more missions and stories or characters or expansions or anything to go for this game? So I searched and I found three things because I couldn't find anything. On, I should have said that in the first place. I should have said, I didn't find anything. But there were three things that I did find. I found a site called HeroScape. It was a game. It had miniatures. But it wasn't Hero Quest. I found Board Game Geek. Big turning point. This is second turning point. I'm telling you about second turning point now. Yeah. And the third thing I found was the dicetower.com. 
Now these three things combined changed my world even more. Lucky for me, my local Toys R Us had a copy of Heroscape. Yeah, I had to think about that one because I get it mixed up with Hero Quest. But they had a copy, so I picked it up for a reasonable price. As you can see, it's basically Heroscape, but in an open world. You've got a terrain and you fight each other, much like Hero Quest. Hero Quest, Hero Escape. Yeah. Okay. I took this home, I tried to find someone to play it with, I could not. So, I convinced my dad that this was a chess variant. He played, once, put it back in the box, never saw the light of day for a long time. But, that did not stop me from buying the second Master Set, which came with more terrain, more monsters, more missions, more pieces, mmm, lovely. And then searching online, I found that you could buy terrain packs like trees, and extra monsters, and snow, and forests, and castles. And I got really excited. Especially when, because as you can see, this was MB Games Hasbro. Hasbro! When Wizards of the Coast bought it, they started bringing out their own expansions as well. Dungeons and Dragons related. Fantastic! We're going into a dungeon, much like Hero uh, Quest. Hero Escape? Hero Quest. Yeah, so I thought, fantastic! And then they decided to cancel making it all together. Now, you'll probably say to yourself, that's a hell of a lot of game. And it is. But there was lots more available at the time. There were lots of little packs that you could buy with extra monsters and creatures and personages. Personages? But that was just another tip of it. There was also more terrain and then there were more missions that you could do. And then there was a, a heroscapers.com which had uh, a generator so you could generate your own landscapes. This was a world infinite and I loved it. Now, I'm going to do something very, very, very special which I wanted to do for a long time and I think Mr. Vassal will enjoy this as much as anybody. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the game, I'm just going to briefly go, glance over the rules and how it's played. It's a combat game, unless the rules say otherwise, where one player takes on another, or various players, depending on how many expansions you have, will attack others or team up against others. And how that will start is people will construct an army of monsters, creatures from other worlds and times and spaces. You would set a level, you would say, say 300 points is the maximum level of your, everybody's army. And then you'd look at these cards and there is a wealth of cards and monsters and types throughout the game. As you can see, I have a load, shed loads. Okay. And what you do is you will build an army to the value of 300 points. So I wouldn't be able to put these two together because that makes 310 points. Okay, but obviously if I pick up other creatures, you can have one big creature and several little ones, or you can have a, a, 
a level playing field of monsters. It depends on your playing type. Each monster or group comes with a card. So this is a group. So whenever these guys move, they move together and fight together. Whereas this monster fights on his own. These cards are double-sided. There's an easy version, which just tells you your movement spaces, your distance of attack, your attack dice and your defense dice. And then there's an advanced version, which gives you life points and special powers, which you can use in the game. The rest of the game is basically based on the terrain and as you can see you can create any kind of terrain that you like. I threw this one together, oops, and I threw a monster, uh, but the manuals, they all come with detailed explanations of how movement works on the, on the game, you know, um, and it also comes with lots of maps and scenarios for games. So it's not just a case of you kill the other monsters, there are other things like paintballing, uh, capture the flag, there are escort missions, there are um, last man standing missions, but when I say that I don't mean you attack the other player and they attack you, but there are some last, last, stand, last man standing missions where there's a, a level of fog and it's poisonous and each round of the game there's a, Anyone stuck on the first level of the board will be uh, eliminated. And then the second level on the second round, and the third level on the third round. So it's a case of survival. There are lots and lots of different variations of, the, of missions that you can do in this game. Uh, fighting is easy. It's a case of you have four dice to attack, and the other player has four, four dice or so, or maybe more. But there are less shields than there are heads, and it's basically a case of, oh, I've got two heads, and you've got three shields, so you blocked all my attack. But there are also special powers on the board, like this glyph, or this glyph here, which gives, if you leave a man on it, they will defend, uh, give you extra dice and defense. There are so many things, each piece of terrain you could treat differently in a game, so like, the water here could be toxic. Anyone that stands in that water loses a, a life point. You can do anything. You could say that going through the snow or going through the swamp costs you two movement points because it's really, really thick. The, the, the only limitation to this game is your imagination. You can do pretty much anything that you like. So you're probably asking yourself at this moment, what's so special about this game? Well, personally for me, what's so special about this game is that this game introduced me to the Dice Tower Network. So I would like to say a big thank you to Tom Vassell and all the other contributors over the years that have contributed to introducing and educating the world in gaming. Because it is a major part of our lives that we seem to have forgotten about. Reason number two. This game has broken down the barriers of communication for me. As you may or may not know, I live in France at the moment, and communication is a nightmare because je ne parle pas trop bien français. There you go. So, communicating with other people has been a nightmare. But, luckily, there was one time I was playing this with my daughter on the table, and a friend came round. Now, I could not communicate with this friend, but I was able to play this game with them. Which means that gaming is not solely just for you or me, it's a universal thing and we can play games with anyone. And I've been using this game to introduce other gamers to game. And it's built up my confidence and, and it made my life The third reason this game is so special to me is that it got my daughter interested in gaming. She games. She calls for this game to come out all the time. Unfortunately, it takes a long time to set up and a long time to pack away. But when I do actually get it out and we play, we have a good laugh. Afterwards, after a couple of hours of playing, she, I let her play on her own because she just does this. Shall we go shopping? Yes, let's go shopping. Oh, she's crossed the bridge. Yeah, let's cross the bridge. Oh, let's go back. But hours of fun for her and hours of fun for me. So, summing up, Hero Quest, no, Hero Escape, I knew I had a budget. <laughs> Hero Escape is a board game that everybody should 
demand to get reprinted because it is fantastic. It is not limited to your imagination, but at the same time, it is limited to your imagination. It is a fantastic world of fantastic components. You've seen the durability of the, the component drop. None of that stuff broke. Fantastic. Uh, you can do practically anything you want. You can story tell with this game. You could just have miniature combat battles, or you could have in-between missions for Hero Quest. It's limitless. All it needs is some company to pick up the license and start printing a base set and some expansions and they should be laughing. There's a big enough fan base for this game already. So I know probably Plaid Hat Games would like to have the license and hopefully someone like Stronghold Games who does reprintings might want to get hold of this game. But all I can say is somebody Get hold of the license and get this game printed! Whoa! I broke it. <laughs> Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>